a family consisting of a husband and wife, a beautiful home with a white picket fence, jobs that not only provide but also help create wealth, two to three children that are raised with no worry concerning their futures, a family pet, a dog most likely, and finally a car or two providing an element of freedom to go wherever the family pleases, and of course, along with their dog. And that completes the picture of success across the board. This is the American dream. Okay, maybe an updated version more in tune with the advances in taste and technology. But the principle still revolves around the same fundamentals. Freedom, opportunity, better life and success. And this dream went on to sustain itself for almost 30 years. From the end of World War II till the mid-70s when Americans truly built themselves and their nation into a global powerhouse. This dream then went on to invade other parts of the Western world. Europe, by the mid-60s, started to assimilate much more of this new American culture. And soon enough, the American dream wasn't purely American anymore. Can it be that Arabs are withheld from the achievements and advancements taking place because they have no such tangible dreams and goals from the very outsets of their lives? Can this also be a reason why Arabs are far back behind the rest of the developed world, in terms of their gross domestic product, human development index, and other benchmarks of a nation's prosperity and living standards. Dreams for Arabs on a regional and nationwide scale came and went in various versions. Independence and self-rule was first to be tested, and those dreams, to some extent, did indeed succeed. Arab nationalism in its various iterations followed with disastrous results, and finally, Democratic endeavors were peddled by the West onto the Arab world as the next potential great hope. And to just reiterate, most of these attempts failed. But that's not the specific kind of dream I'm talking about. The one I'm referring to is a fundamental ethos that drives all the people of a nation or region to seek growth and prosperity, to be able to achieve a better life. The same way in which the American dream materialized hope for everyone from very early on in their life and the opportunity to find their own path towards a universal transcendent end. To be fair, success on an individual level can and has happened for Arabs across the Middle East and North Africa. But on the grander scale of things, these success stories were outliers. But I ask myself, is this aspiration even necessary? Do the Muslim-majority Arabs need such an inspiration when the life and existence of this reality is but a transient one and strictly a precursor to a much different and eternal existence in the afterlife. The Muslim faith-based version of the purpose of life and its dream is to submit to Allah and disconnect from the worldly and materiality of this existence. This fleeting life is but a challenge and struggle that can only be quelled through being the best version of a Muslim worshipper one can be. This is the most important of all successes Muslims can achieve. This, as referred to in the Quran, is the Al-Fawz al azim the great success, that leads a Muslim to Al-Jannah, heaven. Al-Fawz al azim is achieved through what is called Al-Falah, meaning salvation and worldly life that primarily includes the spiritual and behavioral factors that help in achieving Al-Fawz al azim But when we look at Al-Falah a little deeper, we discover it also speaks directly to a commitment towards achieving happiness and well-being within this terrestrial existence. And it's this part of Al-Falah that I want to explore and base the universal version of an Arab dream on. A dream that aspires to attain prosperity and success in this life. To realize the potentialities that the human mind can convert into reality. In becoming happy, guaranteeing safety and security, with ambitions to enjoy the ease, comforts and blessings of life. And this dream should be part of all Arab faiths, be it Muslim, Christian or other, not in spite of it. A dream that should be introduced within education and students' formative years, from elementary school onwards, both in the religious classrooms as well as outside them. A dream that is part of a larger social narrative that promotes this version of ambition and success at the family level and beyond. To attain further, be it knowledge, to run faster, be it physical challenge, or simply to live happier, because that is how humans should live, to live happier. And ultimately, hand in hand with faith, and not where one opposes or discounts the other. L let me clarify, the idea is not to dream of vast wealth or material things as the end goal, 
but to push at each moment in life and not to stand still. As it is said, still water runs dry. Okay, I know, I know. The real saying is still water runs deep, but it doesn't apply in this scenario, so I had to come up with a slightly different variation. Anyways, you know what I mean. Stagnancy helps no one, even if you are absolutely the best and most committed of worshippers of your faith. If we look at the dynamic of the Arab nations in this day and age, we can identify the stagnancy. It is real and has been in effect for decades. But the question is, can this dream be fulfilled? It's truly a challenge in many different ways. Some nations are confronted with their sovereign prosperity as a nation. The luck of the draw that saw them discover great natural resources, while at the same time becoming content with the status quo, a state of being in a perpetual welfare limbo. Whereas other countries that are much poorer mainly struggle with political strife, questions of security, and with some even the basic need for survival. These nations are crippled with fear and without the means to rise. It's not their lack of a dream or a glass ceiling that keeps these citizens down. It's a real and tangible brutal barbed wire trap that keeps them in their place. So maybe it's not the right time to have such a dream. Without the opportunities to action such hopes, how can anyone in their rightful mind establish such dreams in the first place? How can there be hope where there is no investment in education, no real industry or innovation, no mechanism where accomplishments are rewarded with an uplift in self-fulfillment, recognition and boost in the comforts of life? Again, not exclusively on an individual level, but as a standard that is rampant throughout a nation's dynamic. Because if we look at life solely as transient and ignore the adventure of life and the dreams of betterment and self-development that should come along with it, then we get lazy. And this laziness can impact our falah on a larger scale. The test of life is a test that is an intertwining of becoming the best version of a human being our faith has targeted for us, as well as the pursuit of the best life we can attain during our time on earth. And this is the main point. When one attempts to constantly strive for comprehensive betterment in this world, we also educate, we inspire, we help across many different thresholds. If individuals and in societies uplift their lives, then those around them will be inspired and find the opportunity themselves to do the same. Others will follow and so on. So individuals dreaming leads to more individuals to dream. Then groups start their own journey and are followed thereafter by societies. And then we have nations uplifting their status, all based on a common dream, a dream to live life to the fullest and best in both this life and the hereafter. Don't forget to join the Chronicles by subscribing to the channel and like it if you do actually like it. And by clicking the notification button, you'll be up to date on all new releases.